Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners and in this video we'll look at how to use the CSS Flexbox order property. For this example I've set up a parent flex container which contains five child flex items. By default when creating a flex container all child flex items are given an initial order value of zero. This means that no flexbox ordering is applied and the elements are simply arranged according to their original source order in the HTML. As we can see here in the HTML, our flex items are structured in numerical order from 1 to 5. In the browser, they are displayed in this same default order. If we apply a positive order value to one of our child flex items, for example to flex item number one, it will be positioned after any elements with a default value of zero. So let's target our first flex item. Here in my CSS I'm using the nth of type pseudo selector, but you can use any other way to select this such as a unique class or a unique ID. And we'll give this first item an order value of 1. If we look in the browser, we'll see that our first item is now positioned last inside our parent flex container. This is because it now has a positive value and the rest of the items still have their default order value of 0. The higher the order value, the later an item is positioned inside the flex container. To demonstrate another concept, let's also give our second flex item an order value of 1. If we look in the browser, this example perfectly illustrates the concept of groups. When multiple items share the same order value, they form a group. In this example, the first group of items are all those with an order value of 0, items 3, 4 and 5, which still have their default value of 0. The second group are those with the value of 1, items 1 and 2. Items in a group are arranged within their group based upon their original order in the HTML. So if we look at our first group, items 3, 4 and 5, which all have an order value of 0, and ignore items 1 and 2 for a moment, we can see items 3, 4 and 5 appear in their original HTML source order of 3, then 4, then 5. If we then look at our second group, items 1 and 2, with an order value of 1, they are also in their original source order of item 1, then item 2. So items within a group are organised based upon their original order in the HTML and then the groups themselves are organised based upon their order value, starting from zero and working up. The group with a value of zero is positioned before the group with a value of one. Let's delete these two order properties from our CSS so everything returns to its default order. In this next example, we'll look at how negative order values work. Let's target our fifth flex item and give it an order value of negative 1. As we can see, item 5 has now moved to the beginning of the flex container and is positioned before the rest of the items. Because all of the other items have a default value of 0, and item 5 has a value of negative 1, which is less than 0, it's now been positioned before everything else. Again, the order value of an element determines the order in which it is positioned on the page. All of the examples in this video have been in the default flex direction of row. If you're working in the column direction, the same principles apply except that items will be rearranged along the vertical axis rather than the horizontal axis. Finally, one very important thing to note is 
that while the Flexbox order property can be useful in visually rearranging elements on the page, it should not be used for items whose content is important to the user. For visitors using assistive technology such as a screen reader, displaying elements in a different order to the HTML can lead to a negative user experience in terms of ease of navigation. So if your elements contain important content, it's far better to organize them appropriately in the HTML itself rather than visually rearranging them with CSS. Flexbox order can, however, be used for purely decorative reasons where an item's content is only visual and is not a significant part of the user experience. I think that covers the basics of the CSS Flexbox order property. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.